Hi, this is Ruth with Simply Sustainable Family, and we're making some bone broth today. We sent an animal to the butcher shop, a cow, um, a couple weeks ago, and it dry aged for two weeks, and then we got the meat back today. And I asked for the butcher to send me some marrow bones, rib bones, shoulder bones, things like that, so that I could make some bone broth. So I'm going to flip the camera around here so that I can show you. So I use my Instapot to make the bone broth. Um, it gets done in about 12 hours, um, 24 if you really want to get some extra nutrients out of the bones, but that's pretty quick for a bone broth that truly is going to gel when you put it in the fridge. And so this is an eight quart Instapot, and you can see that I filled about three quarters of the way full of bones. Um, there's a real big thick marrow bone in the bottom, which you can't see. And these are shoulder blades and ribs and a couple knuckles piled here on top. And then you can see in the back where the max fill line is marked. So I put bones past that level and then bring the water up to about an inch within from that. And then I've already added a couple glugs of um, unpasteurized apple cider vinegar that has the mother in it. So it's really healthy, very nutritious and adds that acidity level to the bone broth that really draws some of those extra nutrients out and just makes it so amazingly delicious. And if I had to say how much, it was probably about three tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put the lid on here. Get that nice chime that lets me know that it's sealed. Come back here, make sure it's on sealing, not venting. But I still have one of the older style Instapots. And then pressure cook. It's on four hours, it's on low pressure, it's on keep warm so that if things time out while I'm asleep, it'll just keep everything slowly cooking. And we'll leave it at that. When it runs out, if I'm asleep, it'll just keep it warm. If I'm awake, I'll go ahead and reset it and I'll run it through three times. And then sometimes depending on the time of day, I'll just go ahead and process the bone broth at that point. Um, other times I may go ahead and let it just sit on warm to fully draw out all the nutrients for a few more hours and then process at that point. So tomorrow when I get back and this is done cooking, then I will show you how I go about processing it and storing it and using it in future meals. Take care guys. Good to talk to you. So we are at 12 hours of cooking and about 16 hours of having been left on warm as well to continue drawing out all those nutrients. And we're gonna take a look and see what it looks like. And that is what it looks like now. You can see all that awesome nutritious fat floating around in there and all of the bones are pretty well porous having had all the collagen drawn out of them. So now I'm basically going to go ahead and pull the bones out of that, skim out any large pieces and go from there. So I use kitchen pinchers to pull out the bones one by one and I've just stacked them here on a plate. You can feed them to your chickens, you can put them in your garden to compost, um, or if you don't have another option, you can of course just throw them away. And then this is that big marrow bone that I was talking about that I put in there. And as you can see, it's just taken all of that marrow out. And there's about a nine inch deep marrow hole right through that bone. And that has all gone into the broth. And then I went ahead and put a stainless steel bowl in the sink and a metal strainer inside of it. Poured their Instapot directly into it. And we're just going to strain off as much of the broth as we can. And again, chickens, compost, etc. With that extra bits of fat and bone. And that is our finished product that we will now put into jars and freeze.
so it's always been my preference to store food items, especially that the kids are going to be eating in glass when possible. And I used to store my bone broth in regular mason jars, but I always had issues, of course, with the freezer making them crack, um, especially if I didn't have like a full 24 hours to thaw them out. So what I've done is switch over to using um, old pickle jars, salsa jars, jars that held um, store-bought spaghetti sauce, things like that. Those jars have a really thick, um, thick wall and they seem to handle the freezing and thawing temperatures much better. And also, of course, since they're usually free and just most people throw them away, it's not as big of a deal if one of them does crack. But honestly, I think out of several years of using them for this purpose, I've only ever had one crack. And so you can often find them super cheap on Facebook Marketplace or you can get friends and family to get them for you. Um, I don't really buy a whole lot of that stuff because we make most everything at home, but um, you'll definitely have friends and family and um, that will be willing to hold on to those so that you can use them. So I've put my old jars. Um, these are some pickle jars. This is an old salsa jar and just put them in the sink. You can use a funnel if you're worried about making a mess but basically just pour that filtered bone broth right in there. And as you can see, it almost immediately starts to separate out into a layer of broth and a layer of tallow. Now the tallow is usually what makes bone broth have a little bit less of a pleasant taste than say chicken broth, or I should say beef bone broth has a little bit less of a pleasant taste than chicken bone broth. And the reason for that unpleasant flavor is the tallow that comes with beef bone broth. And so you can do this a couple of ways. I like to just take the jars, put the lids on, put them in the fridge for a day or even a few hours and just let the temperature come down naturally. And then take them straight from the fridge, put them in the freezer and as needed, pull them out to thaw for soups and um, different casseroles and stuff like that. Um, and when I bring it out from the freezer, when it's thawed and ready to use, I just take a spoon and pop that layer of tallow out and um, compost it. And then the remaining gelled broth is just as delicious and mild flavored as chicken broth would be. Um, but you could also take out that tallow layer once it's been in the fridge and cooled down. You could take it out before you even put it in the freezer. It's really your personal preference at that point. All right, so this is a jar of bone broth that I took out of the freezer a day or two ago and left in the fridge to thaw. And you can see the fully separated out layer of tallow and then the broth below it. And I'm just gonna come in here with a spoon and you can see that that layer of tallow will just pull right out. And you can toss it, compost it, feed it to your chickens, etc. You have this delicious, thick, gelled bone broth left. And I'm planning on making an apple cider and grass-fed beef stew with some carrots for dinner tonight. Maybe a little bit of sourdough bread to go with it. <laughs> 